As a former Mrs. New Orleans, I can tell you that the city is a city of queens. There's pageant queens, festival queens, and carnival queens, just to name a few. And I'd like to introduce you to this year's King K Queen, Opal Masters, for the crew of Queen Atenas. I'm here at the beautiful Marriott Convention Hotel in New Orleans, and I'm joined by Opal Masters, the King K Queen of New Orleans. Opal, it's so great to meet you. Well, thank you, Mary. It's my pleasure to meet you today. You have quite a history with queens and crews in the city. Well, yes, I do. I uh, am a charter member of the crew of Amon Ra. I have been their queen twice, their uh, Miss America, prom queen, pride queen, and believe it or not, I was even king one year. King queen. <laughs> no, yes, I was, I was a king queen. Aww. You have quite a background with some of the carnival crews, and I understand you had your own carnival crew. Tell us about that. Yes, I had the crew of Troy in Slidell, and we were in existence for 18 years. And then it got to a point where it was more work than it was fun, so I decided that that was a chapter of my life that just needed to come to an end. Well, Opal, there's something that's very fascinating about you. You were a costume designer for over 40 years for a lot of crews. Tell us a little bit about that and what crews that you designed for. Well, yes, uh, for, I've actually designed costumes and worked in Mardi Gras for 46 years. And I had my own company the, uh, under the name of Mr. Mike for 30 years. Uh, and while I was doing that, I did work for the crew of Iris, uh, the crew of Diana, Sparta here in the city, also, of course, the crew of Troy, and basically all of the crews in Slidell at one time or another, I did costumes for them, and also the crew of Gemini up in Shreveport, Louisiana. What's the difference between female impersonation and illusionist? Well, a female impersonator is a man who enjoys dressing up as a lady and will either perform uh, on stage or just go out in public as a, as a female. An illusionist is someone in drag or female impersonator who uh, takes on the character of a famous person such as uh, Dionne Warwick or Cher or Bette Midler or you know any nationally known uh, person. And another fascinating thing about you is your own group called the Follies that perform at John Paul's Bar. Yes, I have the uh, Opal's Follies, uh, which I'm the show director, and we perform there once a month, the first Sunday of each month at 5 o'clock. And uh, I have uh, two other uh, ladies who perform with me, Rhonda Roger and Giselle Bouvier. Uh, and then we also bring in an extra guest person every, every show. And so we, we basically have a show from 5 to about 6.30 where we do uh, different songs from uh, different female uh, vocalists. Um, how long does it take you to get into full characters such as we're looking at today? Well, actually the entire time is about four, four and a half hours. It's three hours just for makeup, basically a half hour to get dressed, and the rest of the time is a preparation before we actually sit down to start the, the visual part. Well, speaking of dress, this is one of the most beautiful gowns I have ever seen. It looks like something you'd wear at the Academy Awards. It looks very expensive. Uh, yes, I've spent a few dollars. Actually, it's the most expensive gown that I own. I designed it and I had a company in LA, the Claire's Collection, do it for me several years ago. You need a bodyguard with that dress, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, thank you, Mary. That's sweet of you. Now, you're famous for doing share impersonation. How did that all begin? Well, with the crew of Amon Ra, one year for our Miss America pageant, uh, we, were doing we were doing famous female characters, and the person in charge of the show came to me and said, we would like for you to try to do Cher. We think that with some makeup changes that you could look like her. So I decided to play around with it and do different changes and study her and her movements and that's how I started doing Cher. That's fabulous. And you know, I bet if you had your life to do all over again, you'd do it all the same way because you have so much fun. Well, thank you, Mary. I would because basically I have said that when it's my time to go, I would like the headstone to just say, I did it my way. Well, Opal, I want to thank you for being on the show and let you know that you add a lot of spice to New Orleans, and that's why we call you Real New Orleans. Thank you, Mary. It's my pleasure. New Orleanians are no different from people in the rest of the country when it comes to looking their best. And living in a youth-conscious society, we're all focusing on that fountain of youth. 11 million people had plastic surgery last year in the United States, trying to turn back the hands of time. 
One very well-known board-certified plastic surgeon in Metairie is definitely turning back the hands of time for his clients. He's Dr. Carmen Kobehi, certified by the American Board of Surgery and the American Society of Plastic Surgery. He's an active member of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, allowing him to keep updated on the very latest technology available in the field of plastic surgery. He's also a clinical professor of surgery and chief of the Department of Aesthetic Surgery at Louisiana State University Health Science Center in New Orleans. Let's meet him now. Hi, Dr. Kabehi. Hi, Mary. You know, the business of beauty is big business, and you're changing the lives of people in a positive way with your skills in the field of plastic surgery. What can we all expect as a result of aging? One of the effects of aging is going to be um, starting having the lines on the eye, the bags under the eye. And the most common thing is the patient come and tell me that their friends and family tell them they haven't had any sleep lately because they have the bags under the eye. And actually that's effect of this aging, is effect of loss of elasticity and also the sun damage and the uh, effect of the environment. And a lot of women I know I hear, they say that they have that tired look. Um, and most of it is effect of it again, that the uh, sagginess of the eyebrow, the, the lines around the eye, and also the puffiness around the eye. And most patients, the thing is effect of the allergies, but most of it is just a natural aging process. What are the latest techniques that specifically address the issues that you just mentioned? Uh, the latest technique that we're using is the, the use of muscle relaxants, Botox, uh, uh, Dysport, and also using the fillers like a Juvederm or Restylane to fill the line. These are the non-invasive procedures and also we have other um, treatments like a light treatments and also using a Fraxel laser and Dermage and all these are the treatments that they basically fall in the category of non-invasive, non-surgical. Well, I know you offer many options and procedures. Can you do a combination of procedures at one time? Uh, this is the most common thing I do for facial rejuvenation is the combination of uh, face lift, forehead lift, eye lift, the fat injection. And when you put all this together, it gives the patients a more natural look and you don't have that the typical pull the Hollywood look. You get more natural look and you have more refreshed look for the patient. And I hear that there is a procedure to tighten the skin and contour the face with no injections, little or no downtime, and uh, no surgery required. What is that? Uh, the treatment we offer to patients is called Termage. And this treatment was uh, available about 10, 12 years ago, but it didn't work well and they took it off the market, they did the research and modified it, made it better and now it's available. It is not to replace the facelift but it's an option for the patient that are not ready for a facelift. They want a little bit tightening the tissue with no downtime, no surgery and it's an office procedure and there is no uh, pain involved with it and it's really, there's no downtime. If men are watching this show and think it's for women only, they need to think again because statistically, males make up, I think, 10% of patients nationwide. Uh, that's true. I've been seeing more and more men come in for invasive and non-invasive procedures from Botox, from the fillers, from the facelift. And uh, you're seeing uh, more men pay attention how they look from the workplace. They want to be competitive and stay up to par with the younger uh, people in their practice, in their law firm, and uh, you see more and more coming asking for the procedures. And also before, it was this uh, mindset that cosmetic surgery is more for select group, for rich, and also more for women. And now we see that the more middle class and uh, and also male men, they come in for cosmetic procedures. And Dr. Cabay, you have a machine that no one else in New Orleans has. It's a 3D virtual imaging machine for breast enhancement. Tell us what that is and what it does. The Axis 3 is a machine that takes a three-dimensional picture of the patient before surgery. And before we go through surgery, I can uh, sit down and discuss with the patient regarding using different size implant, different shape implants, and give the patient an idea about the size they're going to be and also the shape they're going to be. And that's the one area that always patient had a concern about what size implant. And we will talk about the CC and the patient will talk about the cup size. And it was hard to communicate with the patient 
and relate to them how they're going to be, how this, what size they're going to be. But with this machine, I can show the patients before surgery what they actually is going to be. And also, it's very accurate. We did a paper on that, and we're presenting it to one of the association meetings, and you get very accurate predictions from this machine. Dr. Kabei, thanks for sharing your business of beauty. And folks, please go to his website at www.kobehi.com. For when it comes to beauty, Dr. Kabei is the best in the business.